a bit, and I think many people in the audience will probably kind of share this, is how do I find new people on social? Yes, I have my friends, and sometimes they're friends of friends and things like that, but actually, how do I find real supporters, people that are gonna do not just kind of like my page or follow me on Twitter, but real people, right? I think something that, that's highlighted in the guide, and I just think it's amazing, is really how you kind of looked for you know, key influencers, key amplifiers. Yes. Talk to us about that, talk to us about finding people. I mean, I literally was a brand new member of Rotary, and I'd never actually appreciated what a global organization it was. And um, what I realized was, when I put messages out on Facebook and try to you know, go viral and find lots of contacts and do that, it wasn't going to work. But there was such an existing network already um, that what was important was when somebody did respond, that you follow up with them and find out, as soon as you're friends with that person, it's like... With Rotary, you're welcome in any club, anywhere you visit, any time you can go to a Rotary club and um, you know, be part of it. So that, that shared interest, that we have the same shared value to eradicate polio, that was a common. So the theme of our fundraiser was very appealing to all of those people. And so once you've got that interest, you've just got to um, really trust the people to, literally it was a lot of local events and they drove it in their particular parts of the world in, in our case. And so, so we had all these nice clusters of events happening here, there, and everywhere. So, you know, there, there are lots of fellowships, even online. There's even a social network fellowship within Rotary, which I had no idea about. And that was quite handy. Talk to us a little bit about, like, your search through hashtags. And uh, because I think that was, in terms of one of the things that, that would really, I think, somebody said to us on Twitter today, about what they liked about your case study it was really about the fact that it was it seemed very tangible, right? And I think that you guys, you know, how do you use hashtags to kind of connect with people that otherwise, you, you know, you wouldn't have been connected to? Yeah, I mean, with the with the particular event and hash end polio being an example, as World Polio Day, where there's lots of other organisations that would use hash end polio, you know, World Health organisations and other other charities as well. So I'm literally just going through, and yes searching for all of the results and then following the ones that have got that hashtag. <laughs> and, you know, you follow relevant people and they follow you back, you know. And that's how it goes. It's uh, very scientific. Yeah. <laughs> so I think this next question is for the two of you because I think both of you are amazing storytellers on, um, on social. Why is it important to be kind of authentic? And I think, you know, in, in, in the book, in the guide, Child's Eye is really about cultivation. I think they have an amazing approach to, to once they've identified somebody or someone as a donor, they really kind of tell a story and they really kind of take that person on a journey. Uh, you really get a sense of who the organization is, who, the, who, who is it that you're kind of working for and with. So, and I think with cystic fibrosis, you kind of do that very well, again, after someone is, has given you a gift, right? So I'd love for you guys to talk a little bit about what you've learned in terms of being authentic and telling that story and taking people on a journey um, on social media? Yeah, I think... Uh, do you want me to? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had the mic. <laughs> um, yeah, the journey of Child's Eye has been a very personal one. It was uh, me, uh, left television, um, told the world that I wanted to build an orphanage, which five years later is the worst idea in the world. But, you know, what has happened is, from the very beginning, I put it out there. Um, and when I started the project, I went out and did a video diary, and every single day I was learning, and basically I learned that it was the worst idea in the world. Um, and, um, and that was it. We, we listened, we learned, we adapted. And as a community, people came who knew far more than me, and together we built this organisation. And from the get-go, it's there has been this real authenticity about it. It's been kind of like, yeah, we, you know, we'd like to do this, but we don't know how to get there. But we need you to help us get there. We don't need your money. What we need is your skills and expertise. And now we really need your money. But we were always <laughs> really bad at asking for money. But generally, um, so that has been it. And now. I, as the founder, what's really exciting is all of my team all have, um, we're all on Chatter and um, we have a community network and so all my team in Uganda are essentially updating the story every day 
And there is no vetting, there is no comms people. Essentially, they're just... I was reading about one of my social workers today, and she was going to visit a child. And she took a picture, and literally she was up to there with water, just walking along the road. With, uh, and you know, and that was how far. And she had the foresight to take a picture of her, because it's kind of crazy that you're going to see, you know, her, do her work, and she has to go through a foot of water to get to see the child that she has placed. So it's so the idea is letting go as well, and enabling your your people on the ground who are actually delivering the work to tell their stories and uh, it's exciting because I get excited about it and I set it up so hopefully you know other people who are involved as well feel part of the journey because of it. Um, well I suppose the key thing I guess with the CFI as I already said it's a quite an old organisation um, but one of the key things that we did um, in the past couple of years or one of the, the key things as an organisation that they were able to push through was to include um, CF uh, cystic fibrosis as part of the heel prick test for kids. So in many other countries, um, th that had been there for years, but actually in Ireland it only came in in 2000, uh, 2011. So with that, we had an awful lot of obviously young parents, and their first port of call, obviously, if you find out that your kid is, if you go onto the internet and you find out, you know, where are you going, and you know, so they obviously were totally engaged straight away. So I suppose from that we started to build a network. Um, we ran, I wasn't actually at, in the organisation at the time, but they ran this kind of uh, programme called the CF Faces. And that's really where the storytelling came in. Because it was people who had CF, parents of children who had CF, who were basically describing what their daily life might have been like in one case, or it's Johnny's first day at school, he has CF. Like It's just really making it very personal about what it is like to have CF and what it's like to live with CF in Ireland. Um, the fundraising team um, were not really utilising Facebook in the same way. Um, you know, little bits and pieces would go up every now and again, but really the only time that there would be a kind of a push would be if we're doing a big like recruitment call for like a marathon or something like that. But there wasn't really very much follow through. So I guess what we did this year was we kind of took the CF Faces model and really kind of did it about us and the events and what people were doing and um, how people could get engaged, how they could support people on larger treks or challenges or events or whatever it might have been. Or if there was somebody in a small little village down in County Kerry who was having a table quiz, well this is going on and if you're there you might support them or share it or whatever it might be. And I guess the more that you're in people's timeline and the more that you're in their feed and the more that you're present and the more that you're kind of not necessarily updating every 10 minutes, but, you know, being real and authentic in what it is that you're saying, people kind of see you as a, a, a good organization, people who really respect and respond to their beneficiaries, but also to the people that support them. And I think that really has kind of been the key for us in terms of like kind of building it and also cultivating actually, um, and bringing people, bringing people on. So, yeah. You have a brilliant story that we could, that we really wanted to feature in the guide, but we couldn't because we were limited by all our own design limits. But, uh, <laughs> but I'd love for you to talk about it because actually it, 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 it answers some of the identification question as well. So tell us a little bit about this crazy, tough mutter, Ireland, all this money that you raised and how all that came about because of social media. Okay, um, so um, I follow this guy at home on Facebook. Uh, he's a personal trainer, which like, yeah, big deal. But uh, he's a really young guy, really quite inspirational. And, um, you know, I just kind of noticed right after I started in uh, Cystic Fibrosis, I like, oh, this guy has... 80,000 likes on Facebook, wow. I mean, are there 80,000 people that follow one person in Ireland? But apparently there are. <laughs> and um, so uh, I said, yeah, you know, he would be a really good person um, to have as an ambassador. Um, physical fitness exercise is extremely important for people who have CF. Um, it's kind of a natural physiotherapy. It helps improve lung function and obviously for overall well-being. So it's really part of the things that we, uh, part of the, the suite, if you like, of um, recommendations that, that's made for people who have CF. And as well as that, Cystic Fibrosis Ireland, we 
grant aid for want of a better word um, uh, we have like an exercise grant program for people who have CF so they can get trainers or they can maybe join a class the issue if you have CF is it's not easy for them to join a public class or join a public gym because of cross infection so sometimes the gym has to come to them okay so either a trainer or a piece of home equipment or whatever it might be so we, I thought this guy would be a really good fit. My, my idea was that we would get him to tweet during National Awareness Week or put up a Facebook post where our t-shirts say, yeah, you know, I'm supporting Cystic Fibrosis Ireland and text 50300, donate two euro today, whatever it might be. So um, I went down, I met him, I said we're doing this and uh, as it happened, a month later, our conference was on in the town where he lives. So he said, yeah, you know, I'll come along. I said, okay, cool. So that night he came along, he met, obviously people who had CF, their families, and afterwards he came to me and said, oh, I, I have an idea, I'm, I'm going to do something, and I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. I said, okay, fine. And um, without talking to me, he set up this uh, group on Facebook. Uh, his name is Pat Dibley. You should all look him up, follow him, super guy. Um, his name is Pat Dibley, and he set up this group, PDF for Fitness, uh, PDF for CF. And he announced in a video blog that he was going to bring 400 people um, to Tough Mudder. The first time Tough Mudder was in Ireland. And we were like totally blown away because he has a huge Facebook following. So it meant that automatically we were exposed like to 80,000 people, 90,000, 100,000. It's over 100,000 100, likes on Facebook. So, you know, it meant that we all of a sudden were able to have exposure and he was always kind of, if you like, sharing stuff that we were sharing, encouraging people to need to do different things. Um, he ended up uh, taking over 500 people and as of yesterday had raised over 160,000 um, euro oh, yeah. for CF in Ireland. So it's really amazing and that was all done on Facebook through his Facebook group, through mutual sharing on his side and, and on our side. So it's like I was saying, it's not like the dollar comes or the euro comes because somebody goes into Facebook, goes to your pages and hit, hits the donate button. It's really about maximizing your network but other people's network to really get people to find out more about you. Because really they were going along on the journey because it was him. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily because it was about us. What we did helped and he did loads of video diaries he talked to people who had cf he went to a cf unit in the hospital showed you know it was really personal and um i guess from our point of view as an organization we really learned from that about what we can do ourselves as well so i think that that probably is is a really good example of, of how you can cultivate and grow and, and share share your story which is really important